1940, Britain stood alone. German U-boats were sinking ships faster than British shipyards could replace them. Over a million tons of shipping died. It was to America we looked, and the start of the Liberty Ship Building Program. In three years, they produced two and a half thousand ships. This is the story of one of them, James Egan. I first came across the James Egan Lane back in the early 70s. Although the superstructure had been swept by the Navy in the mid 50s, an almost complete hole sat on the seabed, a lot different than she is today. The James Egan Lane was one of the many famous Liberty ships that was built by the Americans in the Second World War. These Liberty ships were just as important to the war effort as were the Spitfires as they brought essential supplies to the UK ports when we were fighting for our freedom. The Liberty ships had their beginnings in the dark days of the 1930s depression. The Sunderland shipyard of J.L. Thompson and Sons hadn't launched a single ship for five years. Fortunately, some design staff were kept on the books and they came up with a design for a cargo vessel which would be both economical to build and to operate. She would carry 10,000 tonnes of cargo at a speed of 10 knots and burn about 17 tonnes of coal a day, as against 25 tonnes a decade earlier. When the war started, the Admiralty instructed the shipbuilders to concentrate on standard designs for cargo vessels, and so Thompson's chose their economy type and built the Empire Liberty, which was launched in November 1941 from their North Sand shipyard. However, it became obvious that British shipyards alone couldn't keep up with the losses. A year earlier, it was decided to send a shipbuilding mission to North America to see if America and Canada would be interested in helping us out. The delegation was headed by Cyril Thompson of J.L. Thompson with an order of 60 ships. He took with him plans of the Empire Liberty. There was opposition from the US government at first, but a contract was signed and production began. 
Here we are in Witsand Bay. That's been part of our lives for has a very long time, hasn't it? Has indeed, all our lives. And of course, the focus of that intention has been out here at uh, the wreck site of the James Egan Lane, which has been part of our life, along with the rest of the coves for 50 years. 50 probably, years. It's given, uh, given us a lot of pleasure. Yeah, it has indeed. Do you remember the days when we used to, uh, when we finished the, the, the dive or snorkeling, we would go up to the Coast Guard station and, oh, and have a cup called? of tea with um, uh, Bill Pink. I Bill think Pink, he used to put the kettle on for us. The, coast, the old Coast Guard guy up there. But I think it was pure adventure for us, wasn't it? Because, because there weren't many people who were, who were going into the sea as we were in those days. There weren't any divers, really. Or divers. Never saw them anyway. 